Hey, Cara. <clears throat> Hi, Jamie. How are you? Yeah, good. Thanks. Good. You it's keeping nice well? Yeah, it's been a lovely summer. So it's good to see you at the Zenium. Yeah. yeah, no, I've, I've been I've been joining some of the so I know they set up a, a call on the on the Europe side a little bit, but I know I missed it was bank holiday here and I, I was talking about it. I know this finality use case. So I, I don't know. I think I I'm down to talk a little bit today about that. So I have some some time if if there's other things that if there's some free slots. I know Emil, I put it down, but um yeah, that's uh good to see everyone. Is it very hot in London at the moment? Is that's where you're based, isn't it? I'm actually in Virginia right now. Oh, Virginia, right. Yes, visiting family. Yeah, so ironically, it's cooler here, I think, than London. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's extremely hot in Europe at the moment. I know we, we had a little heat, heat wave ourselves, but it's uh, nothing nothing compared to what's going on in London or the wider Europe. Hello, Michael. Hello. Hey there. So I've met both of you, um, kind of. Uh, would you like to introduce yourself, Michael and Jamie, so that I don't know if you two have met. Sure, yeah. Um, no, thanks, Cara. Um, <clears throat> no, I, I've only joined a few of these calls. <clears throat> I'm, I come from Fidelity Investments, and um, we've been just very interested, I suppose, in the, the CD events specifically. We've been working for some time on I suppose collection using the cloud event model ourselves for ingesting data from our our CI/CD pipelines and and other tools around our DevOps tool chain and uh, we got connected with Cara I suppose a long time ago when the CD events initiative was been going on and I got to meet Andrea and um, when we were in I was in Austin there back in June at CDCon so we got to connect a little bit around I think you're coming toward the first milestone so. I'm very much from a end user perspective, I suppose, but um interested to see how um we can help drive potentially some of the use cases and involved in picking up, I think when we're in Austin, how we can sort of reestablish that plugin project that was built out around Jenkins so we can start to introduce CD events into it, I suppose, from the cloud event model that we can leverage. So that's just a little bit about myself. Cool. Uh, so yeah, I'm, um, I was working at city up until, uh, April, um, where I was doing a lot of stuff with their supply chain security, uh, program. And, uh, now at a, uh, founded a startup with some folks, uh, focused on supply chain security. And so we've been, um, building out a lot of different things. So city had, uh, contributed out, uh, to the open SSF. Um, a tool called Fresca, which is based on Tecton and and some policy tools and and uh, Tecton chains and a bunch of other things to sort of um, make it you know uh, uh, like by default you know you get a high level of salsa if you've heard if you've been hearing about that um, of all of your builds and so we've been doing a bunch of different things so I I uh, co led the um, CNCF's Secure Software Factory Reference Architecture, which Fresca is based on. Um, I'm also a member of the Salsa Steering Committee, and um, you know, a security uh, a, a lead in the security uh, group in the CNCF, the security tag. Um, and so, yeah, we're we're looking at. Uh, areas where we can sort of better collaborate with the CD Foundation, both from the perspective of you know some of these other groups that I'm part of, like the Open SSF and the CNCF, and how we can kind of um, you know uh, some of that work together. And then um, for stuff like uh, other things that we're working on, like stuff like Fresca, looking at how we can start to integrate you know um, events in there as well, right? Because we want to be able to sort of track those events throughout the supply chain. Of, um, of of uh, the life cycle of the um, of the software, and then you know 
be able to sort of ask questions of, of those events and then also be able to better um, interoperate where, you know, certain tools today that don't have, um, let's say salsa integration, if they support CD events and they support some of these other things, they can, they can almost automatically get at least some level of salsa. Cool. Hey, Tracy, I was just introducing myself there. I think I might have seen you on one call a long time ago. I was just explaining, um, I'm from Fidelity Investments and, uh, been, been tracking this CD events project for some time now. And, um, yeah, just from a, I suppose, an end user standpoint, very interested to see how the, the project's evolving and helping just provide input to some of the use cases and discussion as the, um, the specification sort of initial release has been, has been vetted out. So that's a little bit about myself. Well, welcome. We're happy to have you. Uh, we've been all working on this for a while. Um, I, I think that I'm, I'm hoping that we, I think where the real core discussions are going to be at right now for this group is going to be in the um, vocabulary meetings that we've been having. Because that's uh, at this juncture for the CDF, I keep telling everybody, and excuse the wet hair, I just went for a run and got in the shower and then I was like, I could jump on this meeting. Um, that the uh, vocabulary, we need to really solidify the vocabulary across all these different projects the CDF is working on. Um, they're looking at building like a reference architecture. And I think the very first thing we have to do is uh, get a vocabulary that the events team can talk about, the reference architecture team can talk about, we can display on the landscape so everything is clean and consistent. Um, so the use cases is gonna be really key to really understanding how to talk about I mean, people still don't know the difference between continuous delivery, continuous deployment. Now we're seeing uh, confusion around supply chain. I hear people say supply chain is a pipeline that has a chain of connected events. Um, if you talk to the open, uh, open SSF, they're gonna say supply chain are the open source and raw materials that you're bringing into your binaries. So we, as a community like to really, I guess you would call it mixing, mincing words. <laughs> Very true. And did we have um, Andrea's going to be on this call today? Can I hear out. Maybe I, I just pinged him. Just I don't know. Um, yeah, I think he's out. I think August is his. I think he's taking time off. I had suggested. I think we originally suggested maybe we cancel some of these for August since there's, oh. uh, you know, did we just sometimes just need to take a break? Um, but I know he's been super busy with meetings and I think he was going to be on vacation. Fair. Okay. Um, Jamie, let me ask you, cause I, I'm not sure what Andre had uh, attended, intended for this meeting or its agenda. Did you want to present today? Well, I mean, we're recording and we'll be up on YouTube or would you like to do so? Um, yeah, like I, I honestly don't mind. I can, defer to another time when there's more people here, if that makes sense for discussion. Um, Cause I know um, like I've got quite a comprehensive deck. I wanted to just explain, like I think Michael touched on some of the stuff there, like around just from a security standpoint, we have a lot of Fidelity being a large institution, financial institution where there's a lot of rigor, right? From audit security, there's, there's a few different lenses to how these events will help our security team or SRE teams right way right, right beyond. So um yeah, I, again I'm I know Emil and Andrea were specifically sort of pinging me. I, I missed last week unfortunately and uh, at the last sorry the last session. So it may if does not makes more sense we might just wait till there's a wider audience to get everyone together and go through that just to have the I suppose present discussion points if that makes sense. Yes. That, that does make sense and, and fair enough. I think it warrants a, a good discussion. They would undoubtedly and, and let me just take a minute then and let you guys know where we've been and what we've been doing, what we've been working on. Um, so the vocabulary, there's a separate group that works on the vocabulary. They've been working on a standard vocabulary document. I think they have quite a bit of work yet to do and they, they need to, we need to start kind of pushing that. Maybe some of, the, some of these conversations should be reviewing that and, and continuing the conversation. Uh, they have a POC. Um, that they have done, um, and Andrea wrote most of it. Um, we have a 
we have a nice white paper that we pulled together at the last minute um, for CD con um, so there is a good basis for getting really getting um, moving forward we spent most of last year actually figuring out if we were a working group or a project um, trying to come up with the project uh, kind of mission yeah you know, the logo there was a lot of like infrastructure work I'm going to call it that we had we did um, to begin to bring focus to CD events in general there is an open source project that I'm hoping that the um, that we can also bring into this the CDF that is an event an event driven product. Um, it's similar to Captain, and Captain has been a main focus of the events team to, up to this point. Uh, it would be nice to have a second one so that the industry understands that this is a shift and this is where things are going. Sometimes it's hard to be the lonely furniture store at the end of a dark street, right? <laughs> Nobody drives down there. <laughs> we need to light the street up and put some more furniture stores on it. Uh, so, and that's called directive. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Awesome. Thank you for, for uh, giving us that sort of intro to where we are. Uh, Tracy, I just got a message from Emil, actually. <laughs> I'm glad two more people have joined us. I think we have a different, I think we have two meeting invites somehow circulating. So, um, oh, here's Emil. I think he's telling us to get on over to the other meeting or. Okay. Oh, really? So we're all by ourselves? Well, oh, Emil has just joined, so hey, we'll let hey, him. Hey. <laughs> okay. Sorry for the confusion. I was in another <laughs> Zoom meeting. <laughs> We join is this the, the right one or we should we join the other one? Uh, let's stay here now. Let's stay here. Okay. <laughs> so I'll paste the right link to if anyone else would like to join as well, if they don't find the right one. Um, So Mel, I was just uh, giving uh, Michael and Jamie kind of a summary of what we've uh, gotten done to this point. Oh, good. I know that David is interested in this, in this as well. Are you already done with that or? <laughs> yeah, um, absolutely. I told them that we should be focusing a lot on vocabulary right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and we do still aim for having a release. Um, during the autumn of the 0 0.1 version of CD events. Uh, it has, it is a bit of slow progress, I would say, in the in the work towards the release, unfortunately. Uh, but anyway, uh, we still intend for it. Let's see if we can manage. So, uh, Jamie, good that you're here anyway. <laughs> Jamie, yeah, sorry I missed you. I forgot it was a bank holiday last year. Yeah, the yeah. last time um, this meeting was gone. So um, yeah, hey, how are you? Yeah, I'm fine. Fine very much. Fine. Thank you. So everyone, please sign up to the to the agenda. Uh, to your participants list there. Yeah, so, I'm just adding it for today because we had it as August 9th. It's August 15th today. Yeah, no. so I'm adding. Yeah, it is the 15th. Middle no, of the it's month in the wrong HackMD documents, Tracy. Oh, it's I am? Today. There's one for SIG meeting notes and another one for the CD events working group, uh, for the oh. vocabulary group. So this okay. is the SIG meeting group. <laughs> I'll paste it in the chat. Would you put it? Yes, please. Thank you. In the chat. So maybe we need to clear up that confusion as well. <laughs> we may need to update the calendar, I think, because... Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. So maybe the calendar uh, directs us to the CD events vocabulary mom meeting notes as well then i think so yeah so i'll try to sort that out so we get the right ones awesome hmm. okay uh anyway without further ado i guess we can let you jamie uh present from fidelity perspective your use of sure. cloud and your cicd pipelines perfect no Take it away. Thanks. um so yeah thanks <clears throat> thanks everyone i I have um, quite a comprehensive deck here, but I'll, I'll try and just skip through to focus on the, the key points. Um, and I wanted to just start off by setting some context, like Fidelity's been through our digital transformation now for, for many years, going to cloud. And um, we have an organization for those that aren't aware, like we've 
got over I think 60,000 associates, around 18,000 developers across America, UM, US, Ireland, and, and, and India. And we're, we're sort of broken up into around 12 different business units. So it's it's quite a sprawl um, um, organization. And um, up till now, we, we're we introducing our sort of next phase of our delivery platform. So a lot of focus has, especially when you talk about CICD and the pipelines and audit and security, it's sort of critical to our business model. So it's just really to focus on these challenges at the start, like as in, we, we had a lot of limited reuse opportunities um, in the way we were building our capabilities and extracting data from them. Um, we have a lot of um, audit and risk SOC 1 level, different types of um, standards that we need to meet. So it, the way we scale it, go about that, that process, making it less painful for teams um, and, and making sure that we, we have a proper lineage, I suppose, from when teams commit right the way through to the asset being deployed into production. So that was just sort of where we're trying to focus some of our, our energy on. Um, and part of the key platform, and this ties into the, the way we're using our cloud events right now, which we're looking to port to CD events. And the reason we're interested in this project is um, we, we've come up with um, leveraging inner source within the firm where we have gathered all the I suppose the knowledge across those associates into a single place and focused on inner source where we've created this this pipeline library where we've standardized a lot of our i suppose our common functions around a capability model um, and based off that we're constructing common workloads so whether you're dealing with again we're, we're into every single type of, of workload or, or asset that you're building whether it be microservices on kubernetes or various data platforms that we're building out so we're concentrating the energy is on as much standardization as possible. So that we we do have like a log for J or vulnerabilities, for example, our ability to um, I suppose remediate those as quick as possible, but also facilitating the velocity that teams can put, push code out without doing a lot of heavy processes. So the, the the key points here is is that we have this hierarchy where the library of common functions, like the Lego blocks analogy, and the the catalogs are the instructions, but Inner source has been key to sort of garden a lot of interest around the standardization. Um, we, we created a council inside where, and this is really what the, the events are helping us solve, where this is just a very analogous pipeline at the top here at the various stages, but we have something called an evidence store where across our whole tool chain, whether it be in our SCM space, or we, and we just categorized it to these five level categories where the, the events are sort of swarmed around. So we're very much interested in standards around source control, using the platforms appropriately and the, and the webhooks available to capture events at source. So we can sort of automatically attest um, things that are happening as opposed to a sort of trust-based model where teams may need to call governance gates and things like that. So we've identified these high level controls. So for example, ensuring that code is from the proof system, peer reviews are occurring, the way the code's being built um, and linted and scanned is, is being captured. And you can see as we go forward here, there's, there's a higher rigor of security for doing the containers, for example, or um, the assets being built in the appropriate area, testing the quality of the assets is being built out, and then production predominantly around having ensuring that we have the appropriate access controls and logical separation. So this, each of these, as you dive into them, has another dimension that, that the controls allow us to sort of understand, but it allows us to understand no matter what workload or asset is being built in Fidelity, we want to ensure that it meets the appropriate um, controls that are defined here. And, and we had certain legacy items that like you could push code in, for example, not tested appropriately and it'd be pushed into production. I had a, ri a risk factor that we didn't want to have. So anything new in the, in the existing platforms that were, so the, the new strategic platforms we're building, we want to have this out of the gate. It would help with the migration platform that's happening. And um, I think it's pretty standard from what we're showing here that these are the domains. So like, how are we realizing this? If we look at this high level sort of context view, we, we're, we're using, we've made different types of orchestrator in, in Fidelity traditionally. We're focusing pretty much 
Jenkins Core is our core orchestrator right now. Um, we do, do have, like for example, you deploy and, and a few different types of, that, that are legacy that teams are moving from. Um, but we have our pipelines, but that's not all part of the picture. We have an in-house portal where we deal with all onboarding. So if you want to create a role, if you want to be access to an AD group, for example, for so anything to do with role management, anything to do with onboarding onto the systems is captured through our ALMX portal. Um, and that allows us to understand a sort of an application profile picture of what roles are assigned to what, those transient actions as they occur, just to ensure that access couldn't be mistakenly given to one team and then revoked at another stage. We want to capture all those interactions as they occur. The actual tools themselves, so whether it be Bitbucket, GitHub as our core SEM systems, um, we have Artifactory, for example, as our artifact repository, other um, tools that support the system, such as SonarCube or other, um, could be GitHub Advanced Security Veracode, um, governance services, or any other system in place provides input to this. And, and the idea of the evidence store is, is that all of these systems would capture the events through either webhooks um, or existing API services. The pipeline itself, through that capability model, I'm going to talk to now in more detail, we can extrapolate events. And this is why it's really interesting what you guys have done with the CD events is you've got that high level domain already captured. So whether it be the source control management and the predicates around repo push events, pure events. And then as we go into the specific um, workload definitions, we currently curate custom events right now, but we want to sort of move toward a standard that will help us evolve this as new systems come in and out of this equation because this this picture is ever changing it's ever evolving but the idea is is that all these events whether it be coming from the systems itself and to give an example whether you're using bitbucket or github for example those apis are very different so unfortunately they don't support cloud events out of the box so we we normalize that data through collectors and instantiate an event type that will publish to the event the lm data stream in this case and then our pipelines, because we have that buy-in across the whole organization, that this is the spine of their core pipelines itself, we have a nice sort of base for all of the events to be published into the stream. And what we're doing is we're building out an evidence store and context databases that we can then offer back insights back to the development community and teams and audit and security alike. And please jump in if there's any questions, but I, I'll this this picture, I suppose defines the, the value that we're going to get from this is, so by, by having these high level assets here, the goal is, is that we can, we can trace from the commit. And this is, seems to be a good um, overlay to the existing specification right now, because it's very clear you've got commit, build, artifact related events, you've got service deployed, service updated, for example. So this is where we see the key, I suppose, assets that we're, we're using as our sinks, our sources, to provide a lineage effectively. So we want to be able to have a graph from the commits hitting the repositories, how they tie into the, the build process and the actions that happen within that build process, to our artifact store, sub activities that happen, for example, like source um, static code analysis, the scans that would happen, the quality of the testing, and then it just maps then to our environment topology, whether it be in our non-production or production, which can have many sub-environments to that. We have an ITSM model where we tie our, our application assets to, to artifacts themselves. And then this data is of huge interest to our SRE staff as well. So this is, again, another example of how we can tie this model into whatever we can provide at how the artifact was created will hugely help our SRE teams when incidents do happen and help correlate some of this data. So at a high level, it's really data mining. We want to use the systems and the hooks to collect these data points as they occur. And we're currently focused on enabling these sort of the CI part of the equation, just to denoting that as publishing to an artifact store. Um, at a high level, I won't go into this in too much detail, but like Fidelity Pipeline Library is just really, we've cr created these, again, Lego box for a better word, high level domain where we've, people have, whether it be the capability definition is something that does the job really, really well and is reusable within the pipeline context. And you can see here, it's a very simplified view of 
the high level domains. People need to clone code, they need to build code, they need to tag code. Some may build containers from it in a consistent way, but it's all about the standardization. The beauty of this model is it's inner sourced. People can come in and contribute and allows us to scale in a much more efficient way than we've done before. Um, as we go to the sort of right of the equation, we, we have a plethora of platforms and targets, different cloud providers that we support, and we have change management and then high level, low level utilities that allow us sort of cover all the bases. But this is going to be one of the key sinks to our event sourcing. And another view on this is if we take these high level phases, and again, this isn't a, an actual it's just to sort of demonstrate the sort of key phases that we see every workload going through in Fidelity and how the capability model will fit in underneath that. But you can see here, whether we're dealing with our um, the various stages of just taking the sort of the scans and the code analysis, this, this is where we instantiate the event types that are coming out that we're migrating. So currently we're, we're home growing these, we're building those types, but we see that as being where we're seeding the CD event model going forward. And you can see here, um, our categories of test is highly abstract here right now, but we have a plethora of tools that the FPL or Fidelity Pipeline Library would provide the adapters for. Change management is very stringent and, and, and has the key, key areas, but you can see pretty clearly, it's just to provide the, the overall capability model that's there. The eventing, I can demonstrate that in use, but we just, very simple artifact upload, how we're, we're tying in a simple one line, we can abstract the context in real time and push that out. Um, so where does this go when we step back? Um, all of these events, we currently have a plugin, it's a very simple, um, efficient plugin that we use. The Fidelity Pipeline Library will worry about the model, the tools themselves, it's very scalable. If we have a new tool, we just roll in the adapters, but all of them are currently emitting the cloud events, we're currently in the process of moving this over to the CD event specification that you guys have and just prototyping that. But it all comes into the, the data stream where we can create some of this data for, for example, we have real-time gates that we want to use in our pipeline to evaluate there and then, or we have just data that we want to um, process on the back end and do more evidence-based gathering that can be used. But at the end of the day, this will be served through API tier or through a push event notification standpoint, which I can go into later on. I'm just conscious of time, so I'm going to go through this at a relative pace, but it'll give you the idea of how it ties into the discussion that we're having. This is just another deeper view on the actual SEM data points itself. So like we're very interested in um, all the push events, the, the PR lifecycle that happens, um, we obviously can leverage the webhooks um, available in the tools to collect that number of provers being a perfect use case. We process in our data store right now, sort of, it's just a ledger, it's just collecting these events raw. And then what we do is based on the event types that are coming in. So whether it has a high level calorie of cloud event, it will have a specific data type where we can specifically hone in on it. And we use like Dynamo Streams in this case to actually for example, a merge event, we can build out an evidence table and correlate the, the, the AP model with the repository, with the pull request and the last commit ID, for example. That, that information will be gathered ex for exactly from that. When a clone event comes in, it will have a, a commit ID attached to it, for example, and we can then tie that then to a pipeline build is, and then tie that to an artifact being constructed. And, I, I reuse one of the slides that Andrea did because I think it demonstrates very well how that lineage gets built up. And we can obviously leverage this not only from evidence, but from a metric standpoint as well. The beauty of this is, is that we can go as fine grained as we want to, and we can reuse based on multiple deployment targets that service updated, service deployed use case, for example, and the environments that we're using. And again, I just borrowed Andreas' slide here, for example, to just show how we can leverage that model there. Now, now one challenge I probably haven't linked up together is how CD events and the observer is tying in that state over this, the course of an execution. We, we use our evidence store to, to tie that in. So the pull request events will provide the change merged event. The build itself and the artifact being published would help us tie in the last change IDs that come up here and tying it to the shaft, for example, being built out. But that's part of, I think, the, 
the detail that you guys are going into in the specific vocabulary discussions. But we see a huge advantage of us being able to get, obviously, the metrics. But the evidence is critical for us as well, that we want to make sure teams have no cognitive load. This has just been collected behind the scenes implicitly. And this is an example of some of the webhooks. Bitbucket, for example, you get these out of the box, and we're able to instrument up what we want to. And we can capture the whole life cycle, for example. So it provides a huge amount of data points that is, is very interested, not only from our um, evidence-related items, but from our, our chapter leads, for example, for engineering excellence. They're interested in understanding much richer insights, for example, around pull request pickup time, review depth size. So there's many different applications to this. These are just some examples. Whether we agree on them or not is another thing, but it's just, again, in the internal environment we're in, there, there's a lot of interest in how we can use this across the board. Um, and in a nutshell, I have, again, a small example of how the, the, the events are running on the pipeline itself, but there's a lot of information there. But again, this is a sample catalog that we've written that's doing a scaffold deployment into an EKS environment. And you can see here how we can, um, with the eventing that we have, we can actually dynamically aggregate data points on the fly. So for example, when the push happens, we can get the, the SHA that was just pushed down and push that into the evidence store. So not only do we get the contextual data that's happening in the pipeline run, we can aggregate it on the fly with whatever we want to. And um, the fact it's inner sourced, new capability, we can get the data point. But by collecting it in the ledgers and having the background processing architecture allows us to, I suppose, do a lot of collation across our back end. But we're very interested in, um, I suppose, tying this into what you, the effort you guys are doing to see is there any use cases so far what i've seen is it's brilliant because one of the challenges we have is is uh, how we can instrument this into our existing sre telemetry for example and um, some of our applications it's, it's that richness as we go further down but right now it's providing huge val value in enabling us to um gather a lot of really rich information not reuse the the custom cloud event model but i don't know if there's any questions even concerns of what we're doing, but it's it's. I hope it gives a picture of why I'm interested in joining this call to see how we can um, help see how you guys are working with this and how we can leverage it. Um, and one effort I know, I mentioned Jenkins a bit here, we're very much interested in forking that existing cloud event plugin and, and adapting it to CD events or helping contribute to that effort so we can um, get these out of the box um, as, as much as possible and, and leverage that capability. But it's, um, yeah, I'll, I'll stop there for some questions, but at a high level, that's what we're we're focusing on in Fidelity right now. Great, great to hear. Thank you, Jamie. Uh, so one obvious question, I guess, uh, Jenkins is the, the only engine you use right now for, for CD yep. pipelines or? Yes, it, it is. I think we, we have a lot of, and, and the goal here is, is the the library that I was showing you there, it's abstracted away to a point that if we take on GitHub Actions, Tecton, whatever, it, it's just another seeding that we have. But right now, as part of our, our overall, um, we do have some more complex like trading applications that require on a lot more rich release orchestration, for example. But the, the goal is the library will be expanded across those as well. So they're just additional syncs that are coming in. But yeah, core is our initial target for this. And it was the it was a blank slate for a lot of our legacy platforms to move over, that this runway would be made available. Teams could just contribute to this library, and then the catalogs are there for them to sort of migrate their workloads over. But the goal is, as we evolve our ecosystem, that this will adapt. At the end of the day, it's just a current instantiation of the event model. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So your your pipelines, you, I guess you use Jenkins pipeline, the the groovy language there for defining the pipelines. Then, and it's, there is no, uh, you don't intend to use events to orchestrate your pipelines anyway. You would use at least not with Jenkins. Then you would use the yeah. We've we've had some challenges with uh, obviously the ability to like it's it's balancing, and this is a it's a great question. Like I think t a lot of tools that come and go. Even we've had multi instantiations of many different orchestrators, but. The key value that's been for us is to have 
simple contribution. Not everyone is the rock star engineer. What's worked really, really well for us is, is that everyone's got involved, whether you're a systems engineer, high energy program, we've just architected the capabilities to be as simple as possible, but do the job really well. If we want to port that back, the high level verbs effectively can be, again, if we do move to actions down the line, that will just be another instantiation or detect on. But right now it's, it's, it's that workflow and, and using those capabilities themselves that allow teams to construct the good. We have a, a very rich variety of workflows. It's We're not mature enough yet to have just a single, this is what you're doing. So this is the best way that we can get everyone involved and scale it out from that standpoint there. Right, right, sounds good. So my, my second question then, I guess is, uh, it, is do you have in some kind of internally published library of the event types? You talk about event types, right? And you, you listen to yep. certain event types. Do you have yep. them defined somewhere that you could share or? That yeah, it's 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 pretty. Um, again, it's the way we with that with eventing closure. I was showing you that we wrap the function. We didn't want to have a specific um, contract per event. We we mm -hmm. dynamically generate that right now. So the idea would be is for the capability model that we have right now. So for example, if it's dealing with um, deployment related um, VARs, we would use that service deployed service of data cloud event type. We would construct that with under the hood. We provide some metadata into the actual event creation mechanism that will instantiate the appropriate CD event. It's not coming directly from the tool itself. So that's the mechanism where we can, based on the domain it's using, we can, I suppose, provide the appropriate CD event. At the moment, it's generating a custom cloud event based on the event type itself. So we've, we've literally... Beforehand, we didn't know this project existed, so it was we were very much interested in just having it nearly a one-to-one -one mapping to the VARs that we're, I suppose, the, the event types that are being created, but now we want to categorize them more appropriately to the CD event. So that mechanism can be tweaked to instantiate that. So that's what we're working on since we met in, in Austin with Andrea to sort of adapt what I just showed you there to produce CD events as the event publishers. Yeah, yeah. So do, do you see that the, the CD events would eventually contain all the event types you would use, or do you still use your own custom events, you think, as well, I guess? And I think that's, that's a good question. I think and that was one of the questions I was asking Andrea there, like, how, how are you guys going to, like, I think there is flexibility in the specification that we, you can provide some custom fields, for example, I believe, or there's ability to override. Like, mm -hmm. There's flexibility in there to provide if, if there's no additional attributes that we want that we could add in. Um, honestly, I think it's helping us simplify our event publishing model, right? Because if, if you take deployment, you could be going to ECS, native, multiple CSPs. Do you, do you care as long as it's, it's deployment of some kind? Right. The actual data payload is going to provide that context, and we're just typing it what we want with the environment information and the target. So mm -hmm. for us, it... I think what I'm seeing right now, the way you've modeled it, I think in the security side, on the governance side, um, there may be some opportunities. I don't know, have you covered that already? But at the moment, I see the specification is pretty much around SEM related activities and the predicates, test related information, artifact yeah, publishing yeah. and deployment yeah. and some of the instant management ones. So we're still building this out. So right now, it's a good layer, but I want to be involved in this discussion just to see, like, I, I definitely the security is a really big one. But again, I don't know if you would normalize that under a more generic category or would you um, would you would you make it a first class event effectively? Uh, we haven't really discussed that, I guess. So that remains to be to be seen. Uh, it I, it will not be probably part of the, the first release of the of the protocol anyway, but eventually it could come there. I guess it's it's good. Yeah. good suggestion. But so far, I think the model fits and to your point if we need to intermix i don't see an issue right because for the way mm -hmm. i'd explain that architecture it's the observer that's going to worry about how it handles right, the event right. right so if we can put as much into the cloud event model and if we need custom we, we can cater for both it's really how this the the data stream would process that event um but our i know your wider goal and you mentioned is more interoperability and and and, and some of those use cases mm -hmm. but um for us, it would help us, especially around the metric standardization, because because you'd have that standard um, 
types that you're using it allows us cover a lot of bases under a, a sort of single umbrella but also capture mm -hmm. the metadata that we want to so it's just one way that we're interpreting the use of this as opposed right. to maybe from a wider interoperability it would help us yeah. feature prove ourselves so you talked about the, the metrics then you you do provide some kind of metrics for really was it the uh... Uh, commit frequency or something like that or code contribution yeah the, the current one that we're we're looking to again redecorate the existing model and um with the can't use the right term but the the headers that you've defined will allow us for example standardize the way we're going to do that in the the fidelity pipeline the way we're publishing those events out and using the evidence data that we've got, we can sort of look up. I think one of the challenges I was, I know I was in a call with Andrea and um, like how teams are going to correlate, for example, their, like where are they going to get the look up, for example, the art of the last commit ID? Where is that being consumed from? Is that the observer's responsibility? In, in our case, the evidence store that we're going to look up. So yeah. we that correlation activity is obviously left to the to the end user to figure out how they link it. But for us, Right now it is, yeah. So yeah, uh, what I was aiming at for the metrics, I will soon Michael let you in as well. Sorry. <laughs> but what I was aiming for was the, the Dora metrics that we are aiming for supporting as well. Uh also the box from the events we provide with of course the deployment events and the, the uh, yeah, that's the I think it's of... really redecorating what we've built now and starting to like that lineage picture I was showing you there, like it's 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 exactly that, mm -hmm. linking that out and then based on what we collect in the events, we can tie that together on the back end, uh, the specific metric, if it's not right. made of it. So sorry, Michael, you were about to ask something. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, so actually, yeah, a couple of um, questions. I, I think, uh, well, so one actually, before I get to my questions, um, I, there's also a thing that just came out last week around um, some of the security event stuff. Uh, AWS just released some schema framework, I think, for sort of standardizing. Um, let me see if I can just pull this up. I, I saw the link a couple of days ago. Um, yeah, here we go. They, they uh, in conjunction with a bunch of other folks, I uh, posted in chat here, uh, they, they have a schema framework for, for some of those security events. Um, I don't know uh, how exactly it would integrate here, but might be worthwhile to just sort of take a look there. Well, thanks. Yeah. Um, separately, uh, I think one of the questions I had was around um, cloud events and around CD events and sort of tying identities to it so that, you know, you have some sort of cryptographic verification or whatever, like, are, are, uh, and obviously don't tell me anything sensitive, but like, are there general sorts of security things you are thinking about when sort of doing this to make sure that, hey, something that let's say has been compromised can't try to falsify some of the events, right? Or or something, you know, some other malicious actor can't say, hey, I, I created, I crafted a CD events and I'm sending it to one of the collectors and then it gets accepted as a as a valid thing. Yeah. No, we've we it's a good point. Like we've we built in security straight away to the the the, the event producers for a better word to ensure that there obviously from the way we encrypted and how we sort of ensure that the it came from the source that was there was no sort of man in the middle for example injecting these around um this is something that's again maturing from that point of view i think the other key point of it is is ensuring like that lineage as well that like we have that um like you got the uuids on the on the cloud event currently right that we can decorate it with additional header information for example to ensure the real source of it is understood and there's a bit more <clears throat> if you remember when when things go bad right we have a clear ability to sort of link back through the chain on this but it's um the core concepts i demonstrated today is to is facilitate our our audit and our security and and just collect a lot of the time now there's a trust based model on some of this stuff so we want to make sure that's just built in the metrics is a huge benefit on the side as well because we can collect that and then to your point all, all of that is, is is how we harden it from um our ability to run it out but it's it's not perfect but we're still iterating on it but it's it's trying to solve that um if you think about a enterprise scale where there's lots of different systems coming through 
it's a, it's a half a cultural changer as much as it is to allow people follow that single model and um and, and and drive on it but the beauty of it is is that we're we're getting a lot of benefit from this and it's it's easy to build out and we have a lot more that we can now with with that data the sky's the limit like there's a lot more innovation that can happen on that and that's another area that we're working on that the uh, with all these data points being collected we can do a lot with it but the, the cloud event is just sort of it was a key sort of container of uh, uh, we were using i think what i liked about the cd events it was sort of at least somewhat an effort to sort of future proof us and, and standardize on how we we, we look at that uh, and we're still learning i think to be honest with you it's just being connected in this effort to see how we can um to meal's point is there any gaps in the specification that we maybe can provide some guidance that maybe or maybe not be heard or learn how other people are using it. I think you mentioned their supply chain and that lineage back is very interesting because there's there's many different dimensions to this. So we're, we're, um, we're taking a pretty basic at the moment, but you can sort of hope see what we're trying to achieve. It has many different security now know not only, okay, I know what's running, but how did it get built, right? That's an obvious question. SRE could use this data to help with their remediations. Um, there's there's a lot we can get from this, but we need that evidence being collected. And then it's it just takes away a lot of politics from the equation that someone's attested and it's opinionated. This is collected through the standard and it allows us to sort of move things a lot quicker. So yeah, that's in a nutshell that the goal. But we're like you say, there's there's definitely going to be more iterations. Yeah, no, that, that sounds uh to be clear, it's what what you've built is 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 uh, uh, really awesome already. Um, I, I I think uh, on on that end, yeah, like there's there's some stuff that we're starting to build out from the supply chain piece on how you can kind of have that flow through. And so I was actually curious: Have you considered like consuming CD events or cloud events from other external systems? So that if like a third party were to say, hey, we discovered a thing and we now want to either via a, a poll or a push model, depending on, you know, security and whatever, but like saying, hey, you know, let's say a CVE, CVE gets discovered. Now that gets pushed through to now update and, you know, uh, change both your, your evidence store and potentially also be used as a thing to kick off. Oh, great. Let's update the dependency. And, Absolutely. And- yeah. No, I, I think what... Well- the beauty of what we just shown you there, like you can publish the events can be consumed from any any sync or source, whatever. And again, our our key goal is is that we're not doing as much detection after that. We want to get as much done as the developers are working in the systems itself. And I think that's another area where if we had more buying with CV events with the vendors itself, yeah, to get these out of the box. But the goal is to move toward that direction, and um, Michael, and and to um but absolutely, we do have a, a lot of homegrown stuff involved as well that allows us to, to follow a similar model. What's beauty about the CD events is the nice abstraction around what they're actually doing. The, the actual um, action itself, we can we can hide in the in the data itself, but it, it allows that sort of even within internally a lot more standard categorization of what we're doing. And um, yeah, I think there's there's opportunities for that ex- extensibility to your point from external. But again, we. Like you say, we've got lots of. Um, it's not just the pipeline itself. It's it's nearly as much the, the ecosystem of tools that we have, and some come and go, and that that just allows us to evolve it as we as we move through, and we see that already. We potentially have concurrent systems in place that play a similar role, and and how we can support that. Cool, awesome. Uh, I was uh, looking at the, the. You talked about this. Um man in the middle attacks and security in the events and so on, if we could somehow see if the, the event is actually sent from the source that says they send it and so on. I was looking for in cloud events, if they have something proposed there, because it could really be on the, on the cloud events level, I would say as, a, as an extension, uh, securing that the events are not tampered with in the middle and, and other things like that. There we is something managed it more that, from the, the publisher itself that the, to your point, I think like some of that will be hard to distinguish, right? You want to make sure that the, I suppose the integration points from the, the producer to the receiver, it was ensured that that was nailed down and that we understood it was not coming from any other thing, like effectively like a certificate for a better word. But like, yeah, that was the way 
we saw the obvious, <clears throat> but if there's any additional ways it could be verified, <laughs> um, would be awesome. So th there was something called signature extension before, but it seems it has been removed somehow from cloud events. I'm not really sure why. I'm trying to find traces why, why it was removed, but anyway, maybe you shouldn't get to infer in, into details there. I was just about to say as well, for, for Eiffel, the, the event protocol that I've been working on many years within Ericsson mostly, uh, there is also a security uh, object within, within all those events, which can uh, uh, handle those kinds of uh, signatures and uh, yeah, making sure that the sender is not uh, tampered with and, and those, those things. So maybe we can get some input from there as well uh, into the zero events protocol eventually. I'm pretty sure we, sh we will not have it in the zero one version anyway. It will just delay it further probably, but it's very good to, to lift the, the discussion and, and uh, great that you have experience there, Jamie, from, from your end as well. No, and again, I, I know as you probably deal with many end users there, I know it was one of the last calls there was a lot of interest in like how the dependency chain was being done and how we're looking at that right and it's um it's it's fascinating to see um how how this space will evolve but like at the end of the day it makes perfect sense that we're not crafting custom events and how we can leverage this ecosystem to future prove us for what we're doing and like you say there there's many different demonstrations of the value not only from the data interoperability but from the to your point metrics things like that that we can get out of it so I'm um, yeah that's just our current view and would like to be it's okay connected to this group just to sort of see how things evolve and um as we get more experience in our our migration to CD events just feedback from it like I think that's where the the next step stage is for us and getting more involved in for example we can help accelerate with vendor integration with some of the partnerships we exist to have right where we can get involved in that so mm -hmm. great so gr great discussion and great presentation from you Jamie on oh, fidelity there um and since this is the only topic for for today that I had uh, planned I was actually I was planning to prepare more for this meeting today but I have not been very well this day so that's why I haven't really prepared anything else. But anyway, we're almost out of time. Uh, so are there any further questions? Uh, I know David, for example, you asked in the beginning, we in the other meeting, what's the current status? Did you, did you get what you wanted now or do you want some more explanations or clarifications? Yeah, I, I got some picture very well. I appreciate that uh, Jamie's presentation. Hmm? I'm uh, continuing learning, hmm? it, it's great. It's great to have you on board. Hope you feel welcome and you can help us contribute to this new protocol together. Looking uh, forward to it. Yeah, great. So any other comments from anyone else before closing up or? Thanks for the opportunity anyway, and look forward to seeing the progress guys. Yeah, looking forward as well. Yeah, okay. see you. Kara, yeah. I just want to make sure you all have the links to um, because the work on this is is across a couple of six. There's a lot of activity happening, and I want to make sure you all have the links to to what's being done and maybe the SDKs, and just so you're aware of the movement and and possibly where you want to be contributing or what you think um, is most relevant for you. Uh, should I dig those up, or do you all do you all already? I'm not sure at what level you've seen the work that's been done so far. Yeah, no, I, I have one of my team just pouring this through with the available SDKs as it stands. So like so far, I think we'll get more involved in any of the sort of low level feedback contributions, PRs, if there's anything that we see. But so far, it's just like I mentioned there, migrating off the custom to, to the CD events. Okay, great. Yeah, I was just thinking that your, your work um, probably has a lot that you can input into into how it's evolving and and I just wanted to make sure that you were aware sure. yeah so it's great thank you great great yeah okay so if nothing else I guess we can close for today again thank you and see thanks you all for participating see you around thank you uh, thanks all bye bye